Hey everyone, Krista here, and Universal's Mardi Gras celebration just began at Universal Studios, and this year they have a ton of delicious food, events, musicians, and of course, an amazing parade to top off the night. If you are thinking of heading out to Universal's Mardi Gras event, I'm going to go over all of the details in this video. So, laissez les bon temps rouler! Universal's Mardi Gras celebration will be going on now until April 16th and has a ton of amazing food booths, concerts, and of course, an awesome parade. This year, there are over 20 different food booths that are spread throughout Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure, and City Walk that not only celebrate Mardi Gras, but carnival celebrations all around the world. And I am so excited to get to see all of these celebrations since I grew up celebrating Mardi Gras. It's definitely a celebration that is very dear to my heart. But before you even arrive at Universal for the day, you'll want to download the Universal Orlando Resort official app to get all of the details on all of the food booth locations, events, and concert times. This app will be your best friend throughout the day and will let you know where each food booth is and its menu. The food booths open up at 11 a.m. and if you are planning on grabbing a lot of the food and beverages while you're here, then you'll want to pick up the food and beverage card that will save you a bit of money. You can pick up the food and beverage card for $65 for a $75 card at any of the food booths throughout Universal Studios. They each come with a complimentary lanyard for easy access. If you are a fellow annual pass holder like me and planning on attending multiple times, then you can purchase a $150 food and beverage card for $120. In addition to that, you will also be able to use your annual pass discount on each item that you purchase. The majority of the food booths are gonna be located at Universal Studios. However, there's a couple that are located at Islands of Adventure in the Port of Entry area, right at the front of the park, as well as a few that are located in City Walk. These booths tend to serve the staple Mardi Gras dishes as well as a few others. One of the very first food items that I wanted to grab while I was there was the beignets. So I headed straight to the French Quarter to grab an order. Beignets is one of my favorite dishes from home, so I could not help but start my day with a serving of these. Oh my god, it's good. It's just like, it's just like home. These beignets come in a bag and are smothered in powdered sugar, so you want to make sure to eat these very carefully. The trick is to not breathe. But either way, just expect to be covered in powdered sugar when you're done. While we were in line, I also noticed that this food booth was serving the king cake, so I decided to go ahead and pick that up too. I thought that it might be like a jumbo slice serving of king cake, but it ended up being the entire king cake with the baby and all. If you're not familiar with the tradition of king cakes, they are usually served with a little plastic baby Jesus that's hidden within the cake. Once the cake is cut up and sliced, if you find the baby Jesus in your piece, then you get good luck and prosperity for the rest of the year. But you are responsible for buying the king cake the next year. They don't tend to pre-hide the baby Jesus in the cake anymore for, of course, choking reasons, but it's still a fun tradition to see the baby on your cake when you receive one. Once we finished with that, we ended up exploring the rest of the French Quarter area, where you can find a few Mardi Gras displays like these jesters and the king and queen of the parade, as well as a few additional food booths around the corner. First, I wanted to make sure to pick up the jambalaya and the gumbo, which were both delicious. The jambalaya is made with mixed rice and dooley sausage, chicken, shrimp, peppers, and tomatoes topped with a crawfish. And the gumbo is a stew of shrimp and dooley sausage, bacon, and trinity over white rice. And if you want a taste of classic New Orleans, these are definitely two dishes that you'll want to try. 
And by the way, if you are finding this information helpful, I would love it if you could hit the like button and subscribe if you would like to get more ideas like this and exploring fun things to do in my beautiful state of Florida. I release a new video every week and the best way to be able to see them is by subscribing. While we were here, I also had to try the fried green tomato po' boy, which ended up being one of my favorite dishes of the day. The fried green tomato po' boy is served with flash fried green tomatoes, lettuce, onions, pickles, Cajun remoulade sauce, and served with Cajun kettle chips. This po' boy is surprisingly good and is a great vegetarian option while you're here. Oh, and I forgot to mention that while you're in the area, you'll want to make sure to keep an eye out for the live musicians that perform a few times throughout the day because they're fantastic. After I saw the live performers, I had a craving for some crawfish. So we ended up heading to Central City to pick up the crawfish and shrimp boil. This crawfish and shrimp boil is a mixed bag of crawfish, shrimp, and dooley sausage, potatoes, and corn on the cob. And since I'm a huge fan of crawfish broils, I just loved this. Even though I probably would have preferred it to be a bit spicier, I loved the andouille sausage. It was so good. Another one of my favorite food items that I picked up while I was there was the ube ice cream that's served in a sesame seed bubble waffle cone that you can find in Japan located in the New York area. This ube ice cream is a soft serve ice cream that comes in a toasted black sesame bubble waffle cone that is made of fresh to order and topped with cookie crumbles, pocky sticks, and a panda cookie. Ube is one of my favorite ice cream flavors and is made of a purple yam, like a sweet potato, and has a light vanilla flavor that you can only usually find in Asian markets. And it's so delicious. I definitely recommend trying this if you're looking to try something new. It's definitely something that I am always open to getting again and again. A couple of other international flavors that I got to try was the pav bhaji from India, which is a spiced vegetable stew that is served with toasted King's Hawaiian roll. And it reminded me a lot of the flavors in a chicken tikka masala, which is always a one of my go-to dishes at any Indian restaurant. And since I was in the area, I also picked up the Indonesian style chili crab with fried mantu which is a soft shell crab tossed in sweet and spicy crab stew and is served with fried sweet buns. But there are so many additional flavors that I definitely wanted to try this year. So if you've tried anything that you've loved, let me know down in the comments below and I'll make sure to check them out on my next trip out to Universal Studios and give you a shout out on my Instagram. Once you've tried all of the Mardi Gras dishes that you can handle, then you'll want to make sure that you take the time to check out this year's Tribute Store in its brand new location on Hollywood Boulevard. And at this year's Tribute Store, you'll enter into a 1930s jazz ballroom complete with full jazz bandstand. And if you look above you, you'll find all of the posters of each of the countries featured this year, as well as their corresponding carnival celebrations. If you're looking for specialty Mardi Gras merch like t-shirts, masks, mugs, glasses, and more, you'll be able to find the widest variety of choices in the Tribute Store. Once you've passed through the front jazz room, you'll explore the back alleyways of New Orleans that features an amazing tree, dim lights covered with Mardi Gras beads, and in here, you'll find the darker side of Mardi Gras merch like voodoo dolls and t-shirts featuring death and skulls, as well as light up apparel and candles. I loved the walls covered in jazz band flyers and once you've passed through the back alleyways, you'll walk into an old forgotten New Orleans speakeasy complete with piano covered in spider webs. 
If you want to leave your mark while you're here, you do have the option of paying to have your photo added on one of these bottles that are featured here in the old speakeasy bar until the end of the Mardi Gras event. It's about $80 and you get to keep the bottle at the end, which is shipped out to you. If you are looking for delicious desserts, you can find this amazing dessert display that has a huge selection of beautiful desserts to choose from. The entire tribute store is definitely a celebration of Mardi Gras and will be your go-to place for any specialty merch that you're looking for throughout the season. If you don't make it into the Tribute Store, you can also find a selection of Mardi Gras merch in the main Universal store in the front of the park, as well as shops in City Walk. Once it gets later in the day, you'll start seeing parade performers start making their way out into the park to get the party started for the parade in the evening. There are two ways that you can enjoy the parade as a bead catcher or a float rider. If you're going to be at Universal for a few days, I highly recommend trying to do both. As a bead catcher, it does allow you a lot more time to enjoy the evening and explore a lot more of the festivities. The parade starts on Hollywood Boulevard and makes its way around the park. You can check out any of the park maps to see the parade route to help you plan where you want to be for the evening. If you are an annual pass holder, there is a section that's completely dedicated to us on the corner of Hollywood Boulevard. I highly recommend making your way over there if you do have a pass because it essentially allows you to catch the parade twice, once as it's going out and then also as it's making its way back around. You'll definitely want to catch this parade. It is amazing. Universal has the floats made by the same companies that make the floats for New Orleans, and they're spectacular. Each one is more beautiful than the next, and I really loved each and every single one of them. My favorite of the entire bunch was King Gator, who finished the parade with his puffs of smoke that came from his nose, and this awesome confetti drop. He truly is an amazing ending to an awesome parade. If you've already been a bead catcher before, then you may want to sign up to ride on the float. This year, there's a couple of different ways that you can sign up for a float ride. If you're an annual pass holder, you can reserve a spot for the float for you and up to four additional pass holders on select nights throughout the season. I did look into this option, but it looks like it's all booked up for the entire year. But don't worry, there's a couple of additional ways to get on a float. The main way is to get on the virtual queue that opens up at 3 p.m. on the day of your visit. You'll want to make sure that you do this really quick because reservations tend to go very fast. If you don't get selected for the virtual queue, your last option is to do the float ride and dine experience, which is what we opted to do. For the float ride and dine experience, you'll get your choice of having dinner at one of four restaurants, two at Universal, which is Finnegan's and Lombard's Food Grill, and two in City Walk that include Cowfish Sushi Burger Bar and the MBC Grill and Bar. We were already planning on eating at Lombard's Seafood Grill anyway, so when we saw that we could eat at Lombard's, it was definitely two birds with one stone sort of deal for us. And our meal at Lombard's was delicious, and we had our parade lanyards waiting for us at the restaurant when we arrived. Once we finished our meal, we made our way over to Animal Actors where we checked in, got assigned our float, and then got into our parade costumes. And then we just waited until it was time for us to head back to the parade floats. Please know that riding the parade floats will cut out about two to three hours out of your day. So you'll wanna make sure that you allocate for this time if you are only visiting Universal for one day. Our favorite float hands down was King Gator, and we were so excited that we got assigned to Gator during our float ride. They do encourage you to take photos and film your experience once you make it out onto the parade route. 
And wow, what an experience. It definitely is one of my favorite experiences that I've ever had in a theme park. And we're definitely making sure to make this a tradition for us every year moving forward. They give you plenty of beads to throw out and they do say to pace yourself because you want to make sure that you have enough beads to make it to the end of the parade. And our float host Brian was awesome as he gave us instructions on how to throw the beads and when to anticipate the confetti drop so we could make sure to get our photos. I can't tell you how fun it is to see so many people just vying for your attention. It made you feel like a rock star for about 30 minutes as you're riding on this float. It is a one experience at Universal that you'll definitely want to mark off your bucket list because it is awesome. After the parade on select nights, there's also concerts all throughout the season. On the night that we went, Patti LaBelle was performing, which was an amazing way to start off the Mardi Gras season. The concert and the parade do run back to back, so you may have to hang out a bit closer to the concert stage if you do want to make sure that you get a good spot for the concert. If you don't make it in time to get a good spot, there are giant screens that you're able to watch from afar. After celebrating all day long, if you're not quite ready to finish partying at the end of the night, then you're in luck because the party continues in City Walk with Mardi Gras parties happening at Pat O'Brien's that includes stilt walkers and exclusive food and drink offerings. There's also an amazing atmosphere that's happening at the Cursed Coconut during the Mardi Gras season. There were decorations and details all throughout the Cursed Coconut, including on the dance floor. You'll definitely want to make sure to check out both floors of the Cursed Coconut while you're there. If you watch this and wondering what Universal's other Big 3 events are like, then you'll want to check out my playlist that just popped up on the screen. In this playlist, I'll walk you through past Halloween and holiday events so you'll know exactly what to expect. Until next time, everyone, I hope you have an amazing day and go out and enjoy some Florida sunshine.